before I begin, I should address my qualifications um, to speak about this. <laughs> Very technical. How does this work? <laughs> there we go. I am from an almond farm in rural Northern California. I was raised in the country. I know the country. The country is a friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, the country is a shitbox. <laughs> The economic basis of most rural communities is either agriculture or mining. Literally all you are doing is finding things on the ground and picking them up. <laughs> These are careers so basic they have existed since always. And most of them involve picking up or managing cow shits. The country is literally a shit box. But you're like, Hey guy, we went up to this cute place in Vermont, it was super adorable, and they had a craft there and a store that sells Christmas stuff all year long. And I would say, this is not the country. <laughs> Those charming little tourist towns only exist because of the money you, affluent, effete city dwellers, dump on them. Vermont is essentially just Upper Central Park. <laughs> movie Phenomenon, where John Travolta was made smart by space aliens and he fell in love with Kira Sedgwick, who lived in a small town in Northern California, and she made a living making rocking chairs out of branches. He learned Portuguese in just one hour. That doesn't exist. Small towns can't support a bookstore, let alone a lady who just makes rocking chairs. But there is a handmade rocking chair store in town, no one in the town owns one because they cost more than their car. Stuff like that can only exist because dentists and investment bankers from the city come and waste their money in some tourist trap. This is not the country. This is the country. The bare, squalid, animal existence you eke out from the narrow profit margin between the cost of growing food and the money your cruel overlords in the city will pay for it. Because that's what cities have always been. The cruel overlords who take the surplus from the country and use it to finance their rule. Their awesome, decadent, cronut-eating rule. I grew up as a peasant. It wasn't fun. I like being a cruel overlord. Everyone in the country has a practical job. My mom was a cafeteria lady. My dad was a construction worker. Those are very basic needs. Food and shelter. Sorry, it was just Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're working the base of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Food and shelter. That's terrible. In the city, you can have awesome jobs. Plucky journalist. Wedding planner. Lady who owns a cupcake bakery. Ladies who want to own a cupcake bakery. Lady who used to own a cupcake bakery, but then it went bankrupt. Or girl who's answering phones until her food block takes off. These are all frivolous and practical jobs that you cannot have in the country, and all of them are awesome. This is not the one that's supposed to be next. Jews. <laughs> there are no Jews in the country. Before I was 17, I never met a Jew I wasn't related to. I know, I know, it sounds kind of appealing to live in, living in a world where everyone has a reasonable sized nose, and if they don't like their dinner, they don't feel the need to tell you about it. But Jews have given the world such amazing concepts as communism, psychotherapy, second wave feminism, and the CBS situation comedy, The Nanny. <laughs> Economic rights are hilarious culture clash comedies. It pays to have an entire race of people who are genetically predisposed to wine. <laughs> Homosexuals. Homosexuals are the engine of human culture. We are constantly innovating new approaches to arts, music, and overly produced theme parties. Yes. There are gay people in the country, but they have to spend their entire life hiding and fearing and knowing if they smile at the wrong guy, they might get murdered. We spend our whole lives striving to make it out of that hellhole of a farm town and get a place where we can be happy and understood. A David Barton Jim. <laughs> Cities are 
better because they are a necessary part of TV shows about three to four sassy single gals exploring life, love, and friendship. Can you imagine Sex in the City in the country? Carrie would be a spinster school teacher, Charlotte would be married to a long-haul trucker who beats her, and Samantha would be a very, very emotionally damaged sheep. What would happen if you took girls and you removed it from Brooklyn? What would you have? A shot-by-shot -shot remake of an episode of Mama's Family. There are so many exciting goods and services at your fingertips in the city that are simply unavailable elsewhere. It is impossible to find decent Thai food or an abortion in the country. <laughs> if you lived in Jamestown, North Dakota, you'd have to drive six hours to Duluth, Minnesota to get an abortion, then another three down south to the Royal Orchid in Minneapolis to get decent black pepper pork. <laughs> the Winter Garden Theater, I know of three places where there are available 24-hour authentic Thai abortions. <laughs> the difference between a regular abortion and a Thai abortion, sweet and condensed milk. <laughs> and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that the city is full of strangers, angry, yelling people with no concern in your well for you and your well-being. This is true. But strangers be sexy. <laughs> Every time you get on the subway, you have the magical taste of that possibility. You know that some guy or girl on the train might just have that perfect mix of psychosis, sexual kinks, and ab muscles to make you truly, completely happy for the rest of your life or the next 45 minutes in a Starbucks bathroom. <laughs> you can't fuck strangers in the country because they might be your cousin. <laughs> You might be saying, hey guy, what you're saying may be true of New York. Not all cities are New York. That is very true. Most cities are Denver. <laughs> Denver is pretty nice. Well, Vera, you're from Calgary, the Denver of Canada. Uh, Ted, you are from uh, Albuquerque, the Denver of the southern uh, Four Corners region. I don't know, I couldn't research Ted. <laughs> young girl who dreamed of becoming a respected journalist. How could she get a job as a magazine, at a magazine she'd never read before with a dragon lady of a boss? How could that girl mess up on her first day not knowing what to do but believing in herself? Believing in herself enough to get a mango and learn how Dolce & Gabbana work. And one day, earn the respect of that dragon lady only to turn away from said dragon lady. Forge a path of her own. <laughs> Only in a city. Only in a city. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of us are anti sax Each one of us has a stupid, pretend, frivolous job and is spending our money on stupid clothes and pastries to share in the magnificent ridiculousness of this city. Because those are our dreams. <laughs> Cities are built out of dreams. Thank you very much.